Hey everybody, thanks for being here. This week we're fishing out of Winter Harbor on Vancouver Island, British Columbia with Oli's Fishing Charters. Now if you want to learn how to catch more fish, stay tuned. I'm Justin Wolf and this is Angler West Television. It's a perfect summer morning and after a great home-cooked breakfast, we're heading out of Winter Harbor to fish the open Pacific at the northwest corner of Vancouver Island. We're with Steve and James Lynch, guided by Ole Olson. Yeah, we're headed up to the uh, top end of the island looking for some nice halibut today. And uh, weather looks good for the most part. Might have a little blow in the afternoon, but we should be well done before it comes. Okay, we got about a two hour run out to where we're going. so. I like to marinate the baits up a bit so that, you know, it's pretty much a scent driven fishery. So if we load these up with a butt juice now, they'll hit the ground there and just be milking out a ton of scent. So that way as these thaw, they'll just pull it in and put us a heck of a scent trail out there. Throw some on there and then I'll throw these frames on top. It doesn't take a lot, right? Yeah. Because that way, they'll just sit down. Oh, it's sometimes high off. Yeah, that way, well, it stays in the bucket. It doesn't make a big mess yeah. in your boat, right? Yeah, no, that'll work good. And if you're swapping out leaders, right? If you pull a, take a leader off, yeah. put it back in the bucket with the juice, or you put a fresh leader on, it back it's just up. marinating it back up. Yeah. yeah. Just gonna run up and set up on this little ridge here and just see what we were drifting here, and then uh, drop off on one side, and hopefully when the boat settles, we'll be right up on top here. Give this herring a little shot of butt juice in the belly. Halibut chomps onto that and get that right down there, stinking it up. And then we've had these bellies on brine for a couple hours with the same stuff, butt juice. So we're right on the spot here, right on top of this ridge we were talking about. We'll get this one down that side over there, James. Uh, tide's at the peak of the ebb, or it's supposed to be right now, but we're not. We actually got perfect tide here. Lines are hanging back to the south a bit. Um, that scent's going to get out there. It shouldn't be long before they come in. Oh, nice ring. That'll work. Good eating that one. So these spinning glows work quite well down there. First thing it floats so it keeps it off the bottom and then you can actually see in the wind here almost that tide down there. This thing's just spinning steady, catches their eye and then you got your octopus we had on this one and, and usually herring on there as well. Nice. Right on. That'll work. He's been here all about 10 minutes. One we'll the box, we'll huh? get him on the ice right away and keep him nice and fresh for the day. Is that on the small side? Or yeah, what? that's that smaller side. That's about a 14, 15 pound ling. Yeah. We'll get them on average 20, 30 pounds up to 60, 65. Okay. Good. Now oh, they're coming. Yes, sir. You got them. How's he feeling, James? Keeper? Feels like it. Right on. The max size we're allowed to keep this here 115 centimeters, roughly 50, 55 pounds. Um, this one looks like a good one here. We've been here about half an hour now. Our scent's finally getting out there and we're starting to get bites and they're starting to come in pretty hot now. I uh, just came off. So that's the second fish is a short bit of, so I'm gonna put this assist hook on by fish field. And all you do is run it through the loop Get her there. 
put it over, cinch it down. You can even just let this free hang. I usually like to find a tough piece of the meat though and just stick her in it a bit. Now when they come to suck on it, right, they'll get themselves a mouthful of hook. And no more short biters. That'll be, get them. That'll be called a dead in the box here. So all an assist hook is, this is seven aught, and this is parachute cord with a loop in it. And all you do is you take your hook right through the loop and then put it around the shank of the hook of the bait that you're using and it just cinches down. And like, for example, on our jigs, you know, our, our, like our cadence grubs or fish field jigs, we're using them on these because a lot of times they're short biting. And, and on these, I like just to leave them loose. That when they come up to grab the tail, they're getting that hook as well. Now, we just rigged that rod with the assist hook. Now he's got one on. Has been like five minutes. So it'd be cool to see if it's on the assist hook or the circle hook. It's not really fighting, it's just a lot of weight. Lots of weight? Yep. It's 50 feet to go. But here he is on the screen. So he's about 50 feet. Right here. Oh. It's a nice one too. That's big. Way too big. Let me see, bring him up a little more. That one's definitely too big. He's maybe, yeah, that one's pushing 100 pounds. Oh. Welcome back to the Pacific Ocean, just off the northwest corner of Vancouver Island. We're targeting keeper-sized halibut, but so far only big lingcod and oversized halibut have found our baits. But in halibut fishing, persistence and a good scent trail will pay off in the long run. Yes, sir. <laughs> hey, would you have me that cushion, please? These things are neat because there you go. they do when you're taking the rod and you're gut or the upper part of your hip. It, there's just no pain, right? It's comfortable, I'll just let it sit here. From the feel of it, this is too big of a howl, but it's gonna have to go back. So odds are, uh, uh, with my back condition, I'm gonna pass this off to my son and let him reel it in. So James, will you do me the honor? <laughs> Thank you. About the same size as the last one, maybe a little bit smaller. There we go. Nice and easy. Okay, about 15 pounds less on the next one. Sorting through the big ones today. Oh yeah, so we've been using this light here. It just flashes when it hits the water. And we've been noticing we're getting a lot more action on this side. Mind you, Steve's got one up on the bow rod. And I believe that one's got a light on it as well. So it just flashes, just a little more, something to catch their eye down at that 220 feet of water. I thought I had a weird fight. There you go. And again, right on the ice and with his partner. We'll fill that up with hell of it now. We're going to make a move. This tide's starting to push a little too heavy, so we're going to go in closer to the beach where it won't be pushing as strong and reset the anchor and see how it goes there. Didn't realize it was hooked. <laughs> Dang it. That's a ling. You? Okay, this is a 12 ounce jig head rigged up with a fish field uh, 10 inch scrub. And then we put a hoochie skirt over it from fish field and one of his lights. So it's a deadly combo. And it's done pretty good for us so far today. Another decent ling. Nice. Doing oh. good. We're doing good on the links today, huh? I was just getting ready to take a nap, too. And here we go. 
All of our reels are two speeds except this one. Well, guess which one they bit. <laughs> He's acting like the right size we're looking for, that 40, 50 pound range. Lay down a nice scent trail down there. There he is. Okay. I just spit a big chunk of bait. Oh yeah, perfect. Yeah, so that's probably about a hundred centimeters, so six inches under the max. We're about 25, 30 pounds. So he'll be in our over slot size. He's not right on the max. There's a bit of room to get a bigger one, but we'll take him. Nice little bycatch while we're waiting for the Halley to come. Nice. Another nice ling. Not what we're looking for, but it'll do for right now. You can see him right from the bottom coming up on the screen. 80. I'll get a good look at him here, bring him up a little higher. Just don't break the surface with his head. That. Yeah, that's legal. That's going to be right on the money. So that's right about 50 pounds. Here we go. Oh, there we go. Zip, 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 zip. Ah, uh, you probably go out there. Just tighten down on them. Yeah, there's another one. Woo! Right on the tide change. Yeah. They're hitting bait, jigs, everything now. It doesn't matter. Welcome back to Winter Harbor. I'm Justin Wolf. The guests at Ole's Fishing Charters are loading up with great catches of halibut, lingcod, and salmon. Most anglers will fish for three or four days, giving them time to catch the limits of these great eating fish. Today, Steve and James Lynch are working on their limits of keeper size halibut. Yeah, there's another one. Woo! Right on the tide change. Yeah. They're hitting bait, jigs, everything now. It doesn't matter. Alvin, I can't see how big, but you ready, Glenn? Yeah, that'll be a good under. That'll yeah. be a good under. The undersized limit is uh, 83 centimeters. We'll measure him after, but he's about 81, so he's a perfect for our right. undersize. Yeah, you got a bigger one there. Okay. Get a good look at him and see if he's legal. Hold them up. Yep, that'll be right, right on the money. Nice fatty. Right on the money as well. Another beauty. Yeah, both hooks. God bless those assist hooks, huh? 75. Ooh. Yeah, perfect. That's about a 40. A 40 nice. pounder. Room for one more. <laughs> Maybe. Very important to bleed your halibut right away. Just a quick little slice right there. Cooler full of ice, or ice box full of ice as well. Keep them nice and cool on these warmer, sunny summer days. Very, very important to bleed all your fish, especially white fish. On another day, the wind has come up out on the open water, so we're forced inside the protected waters of Quatsino Sound, just a few miles from the lodge. But that's okay, because the salmon fishing can be excellent here. The two biggest kings I ever caught were right here on this Wigahoochee. These things kick butt right there. We're fishing at the mouth of Quatsino Sound. The inlet runs about 30 miles this way to Coal Harbor. Uh, nice protected area in here. It's blowing 30 offshore. It's flat, calm like a lake in here. So lots of good salmon fishing here all the time. The kings are in pretty good right now. Lots of silvers. So nice little place to tuck away from, uh, from the wind when 
when it's blowing 30 offshore. Steve. Oh, Canada. <laughs> Coho. I call a good start. Quick little double. Co, you got a king on maybe or Coho? Oh, that's cool. I'm hoping it's a king, but it's probably just Coho. It didn't take any line. I'm here. Yeah. That's the best A couple coho to start off, not bad. I call it a good start. Yeah, we're trolling about three miles an hour, about 50 feet of water here, right okay. in tight on the kelp. That feels better. We don't even have time to get a cup of coffee. There I go. Nice little fatty. So the wiggle hoochies, they come pre-rigged or you can buy just the bills. And you can take any hoochie that you have, just cut the tip off, put on, glue it, rig it any way you want, fill it with beads, get just get the hooks at the end of, right at the, right at the end of the hoochie is where you want your hook to be. So I'm gonna load this up with a Procure bait sauce, put it inside the skirt. Ha ha ha. Let's go home. Yeah, got some Ready? Yep. Oh. Oh, Ooh, that's a nice one. Is yeah. it? <laughs> a little fatter? It looks like it. No, this one here is definitely a good for That's three doubles. Old Canada. Uh -huh. We're at Ole's Fishing Charters and Lodge. It was a great day at Ole's. Where the guests are relaxing after a day of fishing. The waterside cabins are perfect for families or groups of friends, each with its own private space, tucked away in the beautiful forest of Winter Harbor. There's also floating cabins available for those bringing their own boats. The cabins are equipped with full kitchens, but tasty home-cooked meals are included. And there's also professional fish processing available to handle all the fish you're likely to catch. This morning, we're heading out to Eagle Rock in search of king salmon with James Lynch, along with his mother, Lori, and girlfriend, Whitney, where besides eagles, you're likely to see plenty of otters and the occasional black bear. There's a bear! And of course, king salmon. Pulling good? Oh, he's a nice one. He's nice. Yeah, keep him away from it. He's going to go. He's probably going to take some line here. It's a nice king, about a 20 pound king. Just had the rods in about two minutes. Snap back and lift them up. Oh. Yeah, very nice. Nice job, Whit. Ready, Whit? Oh, I shoved that thing Yeah, hey, uh, look at that oh. one. Fish on, fish on. Another one? Yep. Right on. Shoot, this is the lucky spot. Oh yeah, he's all right. Uh -huh. All right, lift it up and pull okay. it this way. There we go. Very nice. Yay! 
Come on. Another nice king. That's two in about five minutes. It's still wiggling. It's alive. It's all right. Oh. oh sorry. James, you got it. There we go. There we go. We're just putting Lori's back in and we got another one. Oh, you get off? Yep. Aww. But, uh, we'll get the gear back in. There's a bunch of them in here. Oh, uh, he just popped off. There he comes. This is number three in about 10 minutes. Here. Yeah, give her down to Eagle Rock here. We got our fourth one on now. Another king? Can tell, it's not really fighting like one. Oh yeah. Yep. He might take off here. Up a bit. Yeah. Nice one. Yeah. Three in the box. Oh, nice coho. Nice coho. Nice. That's probably 13 pound coho. Starting to get the hook nose on them. That's typical for this time of year. Nice wild fish, probably heading up the sound here to the Mahatta or Caprino probably. Hey, thanks for watching today's episode. You know, without the support of the sponsors, the show would not be possible. So please thank them when you can. Now get out there and do some great fishing.